So this initial lecture would be on plasma cell myeloma, which was previously known as multiple myeloma, and it's also called Kehler's disease, K H L E R. So and also known by the name of myeloma not otherwise specified. So multiple myeloma is also called plasma cell myeloma. It's also called Kehler's disease. It's also called myeloma not otherwise specified. And basically all of them, they are a cancer of plasma cell which originates in the bone marrow. And by definition, in the bone marrow, there should be at least more than 10%, more than equal to 10% of clonal plasma cells. Now, I would go to a, the rapid review of this topic. What are the things they are going to ask you? Firstly, they can ask you that what is the most common cause of death in plasma cell myeloma? Answer would be recurrent infection. Why these recurrent infections occur? It's occur because there is a depression of humoral immunity there. There is a lot of immunoglobulin production, the M spike, the monoclonal protein, but all those M proteins, those monoclonal proteins, immunoglobulins are defective. Obviously, the cancer cells are not there to help you. They are not there for any philanthropic activity inside your body. Uh, they want to, they want, cancer cells ultimately want that you should die at their expense. Uh, so, obviously, these, there's a depression of the humoral immunity. There is a lot of immune globulins are there, but these immunoglobulins are defective. And that makes the patient vulnerable for the infection. By the way, plasma cell myeloma, multiple myeloma, uh, is comprises roughly 1% of all cancers in the human being and 10 to 15% of all hematopoietic tumors and roughly 1 in 5 uh, death due to any hematopoietic cancer is due to plasma cell myeloma, multiple myeloma. Predominantly it's a cancer of elderly population, median age which you need to know is 70 years. It's quite rare, less than 30 years. You should not make a diagnosis of plasma cell myeloma usually in less than 30 years of age which should be highly uncommon. Then uh, coming to the other concepts that what is M protein? M protein means monoclonal protein. Usually in the infections we get uh, polyclonal protein actually immunoglobulin but in this case there is a really monoclonal spike is seen and this is also a very important question they will be asking you that what is the most common immunoglobulin which is elevated in uh, plasma cell myeloma answer will be immunoglobulin G and the next most common is immunoglobulin A. Well, then they can also ask you what is Benz Jones protein. Sometimes in um, plasma cell myeloma, they do not synthesize, the cancer cells do not synthesize intact immunoglobulin, rather than they can synthesize the light chains. And the light chains are excreted via urine. This is called Benz Jones protein. And this usually results in Benz Jones protein here. And obviously it results in the renal failure also. The next thing is that they, you know that they usually are characterized by the crab lesion that is uh, C for hypercalcemia, R for renal failure, A for anemia, and B for bony lytic lesions and bone pain. So A, C, hypercalcemia, why hypercalcemia occurs? Hypercalcemia occurs because in plasma cell myeloma, there is osteolytic, osteolytic activation, of osteoclastic activation occurs, which results in punched out osteolytic lesions. And that results in increased uh, serum calcium level because this osteoclast activated osteoclast is ultimately going to erode or eat the bone resulting in increased serum level uh, then the next thing is renal failure what is the renal failure is the second most common cause i would say the only after infection which leads to death in the plasma cell myeloma patients and in what is the cause of renal failure the main cause uh, main cause of the renal failure is definitely the light chain proteinuria in the plasma cell myeloma patients. All those light chains which are getting excreted in the plasma cell myeloma patients, they are highly toxic. And that can result in, uh, particularly they are toxic for the tubular epithelial cells. And obviously another thing is that, that they can cause proteinaceous cast which causes obstruction, obstructive, obstruction particularly in the distal tubule or the other parts of the kidney. And also, the other cause of renal failure would be hypercalcemia contributes to the renal failure, recurrent infections, particularly uh, bacterial pyelonephritis that can contribute to the renal failure. Um, and the bacterial pyelonephritis occurs because uh, the person is already vulnerable for the various infection due to depressed humoral immunity. And also, another important cause would be renal amyloidosis. AL amyloidosis is often associated with plasma cell myeloma. 
because all these light chains they can get abnormally deposited particularly in the renal glomeruli and the blood vessels resulting in amyloidosis so amyloidosis can also contribute in the development of the renal failure uh, then r a b bone pain and bony is usually due to punched out osteolytic articulations which is seen due to excessive activation of the osteoclasts in the cases of plasma cell myeloma and excessive activation of the osteoclast occurs due to this rank rankle receptor activation the next thing uh, you need to know that what are the other bony lesions which can be seen in plasma cell myeloma answer would be definitely punched out osteolytic bony lesions uh, what is the most common site for the bony lesions answer would be vertebra particularly the lumbar vertebra which would be asked to you then they can ask you what are the other bony lesions could be seen there could be osteoporosis uh, there could be pathologic fractures these things can be seen in presence of uh, patients of plasma cell myeloma or the multiple myeloma uh, now coming to the genetics and the pathogenesis part uh, the, there are three things they were going to ask you what is the most common genetic abnormality and what is the most common translocation if they ask about the most common genetic abnormality answer would be monosomy or the partial deletion of the chromosome 30 which is seen in roughly 50 percent half of the cases and if they ask the most common translocation then it would be translocation 11 14 which is uh, usually seen in 16 person one six person cases and obviously another thing is very commonly seen on the 45 person cases which is hyper diploidy hyper diploidy could be seen in roughly 45 percent cases so these are the key uh, genetic abnormalities which are seen associated with uh, plasma cell myeloma. Plasma cell myeloma is also associated with uh, some abnormalities of cyclin D1 and D3 gene. This is another key concept that you need to know. Coming to the diagnosis of plasma cell myeloma, uh, diagnosis is basically there are few steps in any uh, hematologic lesions. So we start with complete blood count. Complete blood count you'll be seeing uh, normochromic normocytic anemia. You can see sometimes leukoerythroplastic picture because uh, myeloma cells are infiltrating the bone marrow. Uh, you can see a striking feature on the peripheral parts may be the rule formation, which is due to the increased amount of immunoglobulin G, and that can create a stacks on coin appearance because all the RBCs would stick on each other due to the sticky IgG. Uh, in the bone marrow, you can see infiltration. Obviously, there will be it's a bone marrow based cancer, so obviously, there will be bone marrow will be replaced by this kind of uh, cancer cells which are pl cancerous plasma cell and cancerous plasma cells uh, is usually can look like normal plasma cells and sometimes they look like plasma blast which are abnormal plasma cells normal plasma cells usually have a eccentric nucleus they have a perinuclear hop and they usually have a clock face chromatin pattern that can be seen in the abnormal plasma cells also and sometimes they can have plasma blast like a, uh, they look like plasma blast because they're plasma blast actually and then in this plasma blast the appearance would be they can have prominent nucleoli or binucleation could be seen so the key concept is that in bone marrow they can look like normal plasma cell the cancerous plasma cell sometimes they can look like abnormal cells also because they're abnormal the other key concepts in the this what are the other tests would you like to do uh, we would like to do serum SPEP that is serum protein electrophoresis and urinary protein electrophoresis uh, to detect this abnormal monoclonal protein uh, you can also do the light chain ratio free light chain ratio FLC ratio other than the bone marrow and also you can test for the Benz Jones protein urea detection so these are the common tests and obviously you can do the imaging test particularly the x-ray and mri to detect the lesions actually and if there are multiple lesions they're suggestive of plasma cell myeloma and serum immunoglobulin level usually the g level there will be more than three gram per deciliter and bone marrow there should be more than or equal to 10 percent plasma cells clonal plasma cells which is diagnostic for plasma cell myeloma now what are the key concepts that you need to know from here is that plasma cell myeloma or Kehler's disease or multiple myeloma they are characterized by cancerous proliferation of plasma cells in the bone marrow 
and in bone marrow there should be more than at least 10 percent cut off limit is 10 percent clonal proliferation of the plasma cells in uh, the their presentation would be all those crab manifestation i have modified the crab a little bit you can say it's i am crab because i stands for infection am for amyloidosis because they associated with light chain amyloidosis c for hypercalcemia r for renal failure a for anemia and b for bony light equations these features could be seen in them uh, the most common cause of death would be recurrent infection the after that the second most common cause would be the renal failure and the most common cause of renal failure would be this light chain proteinuria the most common abnormality genetic abnormality would be the monosomy or the parse deletion of the chromosome 13 or the most common translocation would be translocation 11 14 so these are the key things that you need to know from plasma cell myeloma then some other relevant terms comes which might be confused with one is smoldering myeloma Smoldering myeloma just means asymptomatic myeloma because they have as per the lab investigation they look quite like myeloma because they have more than 10 percent plasma cells between 10 to 60 percent but not more than 60 percent they have more than three gram per deciliter immunoglobulin serum ig level but they have no crab features they don't have hypercalcemia they don't have renal failure they don't have anemia they have bony bone pain and bony osteolytic lesion. These features are absent. Another term is there called MGUS, monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. These are basically precursor lesion for the plasma cell myeloma. In this case, you have raised immunoglobulin level, but they are less than three gram per deciliter. The bone marrow plasma cells would be also less than 10%. And there would be no crab features. So how to differentiate between uh, the plasma cell myeloma versus smoldering myeloma versus the MGUS, monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. First look at MGUS. MGUS, there is no crab lesion, it's asymptomatic. There is some raised serum immunoglobulin level, but it is below 3 gram per deciliter, below smoldering myeloma or plasma cell myeloma. And the bone marrow plasma cells is also less than 10% from the plasma cells. So only feature is some kind of raised immunoglobulin level and that is resulting that and this is a chance always that this MGAS could cause to the development of uh, plasma cell myeloma. The second thing is that uh, smoldering myeloma. Smoldering myeloma there is also more than 10% but less than 60% plasma cells seen in the bone marrow. Uh, the difference is that in plasma cell myeloma, there could be more than 60% plasma cells, but in smoldering myeloma, there could be never more than 60%. More than 3 gram per deciliter uh, immunoglobulin that could be seen in the serum, just like plasma cell myeloma. But in smoldering myeloma, as it is asymptomatic, there will be no end organ damage features. There will be no hypercalcemia, there will be no renal failure, there will be no bone pain or other features, which are anemia, which are other crab features characterized by the uh, plasma cell myeloma. Another thing I missed to explain that why there is anemia seen in plasma cell myeloma or multiple myeloma. Anemia could be seen due to many reasons. Anemia is that bone marrow is getting the normal population, is getting displaced by the uh, cancerous population cell. That can also result in anemia. And secondly, there is a renal failure uh, that can also contribute to the development of anemia because kidney is one of the source of the erythropoietin, the, the richest source actually. Uh, the erythropoietin is secreted by proximal renal tubular epithelial cells. So obviously if there is no erythropoietin, the erythropoietin is less, that can contribute to the development of the anemia. So in a nut cell, these are the key concepts that you need to know about the plasma cell myeloma. I'll continue this in the next session. Thank you very much.